<sighs> comfy. I'm very com comfy, in fact. I could fall asleep right here if I really wanted to. Sitting on the couch, the tree in the corner, the lights down low, fake fireplaces going, my warm drink, my warm girl walking into the room. <laughs> yeah, well, my parents always like this time of year. They always like to emphasize that the giving and the support and the very caring nature that the holiday has. So, moments like this, I just kind of get swept away in it, I guess. <laughs> okay, okay, I guess it does count that it's Christmas Eve, too. That, that does help. But we're supposed to get snow later tonight, and I could stay up just to wait for the snowfall. It is arguably my favorite day of the year. This is my favorite moment, I think. And I wish other people felt about it the same way that I do. I realize it's not the same for everybody, but in moments like these, I think about those people. And I try to send good thoughts and all that kind of stuff their way. <laughs> it's the Christmas season, babe. I told you I get sentimental during this time of year. I just get very thankful, I guess. It's it's kind of the wrap-up of everything. It's, you know, Christmas season comes to an end, and then it's the end of 2017 and the beginning of 2018. It's a brand new year with brand new possibilities. There's something insanely poetic about this time of year. I get drawn into it. It's... I don't know. It's, it reminds me of growing up, I guess. And all those hopes and dreams and wishes for the future. Oh yeah, we'd have, um... <laughs> we'd have different types of Christmas traditions. So, uh, in my house, it was always really important for my parents to make sure that we had breakfast in us before we did anything. So, <laughs> yeah, no, they'd, they'd make us wait. So, uh, when we woke up, my, uh, my siblings and I would run downstairs, and we were not allowed into the living room. We had to go straight into the kitchen. So, we would go into the kitchen, and we would have powdered sugar donuts, and some orange juice, or milk, and that was our Christmas tradition breakfast, because my parents didn't have a whole lot of money at the time, you know, when we were growing up, so they had to make unique traditions out of something, so why not chibu packaged donuts, I guess. And um, we'd have a bowl full, and we had to finish those bowls of donuts, all of us, including my parents, and then we were allowed into the living room. Usually. Unless they had something set out to surprise us. Like, uh, there was one year we stayed in the kitchen the entire time because we went out into the living room and, uh, they had gotten us awkward enough time and had set it up on the Nintendo 64. So when we walked in, it was already playing. And, um, you know, stuff like that. But we go in and we would say something that we were appreciative of about the season. And then, finally, agonizingly, we could open our gifts. And we were never allowed to wake them up until after 8 o'clock in the morning. So if you woke up at 5 and woke up all of your other siblings, you were SOL for several hours. <laughs> well, it wasn't just us making memories. It was my parents making memories, too. And looking back on it, now being an adult... I can't really fault them very much, because now that I am older and that I have someone, I can definitely say that there's a great advantage towards sleeping in a little on Christmas Day. 
I don't worry. I'll be able to fall asleep. There's a, there's a little something extra in this warm drink. It's to help me fall asleep. I love this time of year. I can't help it. The traditional... Oh, the night before Christmas? Or twas the night before? Yeah, yeah, twas the night before Christmas. Um, no, we never read that, actually. I know that one of my siblings had a really fancy copy of it, but that wasn't anything that we ever did. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, that's a great tradition. <laughs> you had to read the whole thing before you could open presents, too. Uh, what is it with parents and waiting... They're making their kids wait before they open gifts. <laughs> no, I, I, I guess that's true. I did just say that I can understand it. So that's your Christmas tradition, huh? Well, I mean, I don't have like a, a book copy of Twas the Night Before Christmas, but I'm sure I could find it on the internet. Can I read it to you? Yeah, of course. I've been happy to. I've actually, I've got my cell phone. Right here, my handy dandy internet enabled device. Maybe you could, um, could you get my glasses? Yeah, they're on the, uh, they're on, on the other end table right there. Yeah. Thank you, babe. Okay, let's see here. Twas the night before Christmas. God, all I had to do was write twas and it popped up. That's fantastic. Alright, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. I'm pretty sure this is the traditional one. Good night. Yep. By Clement Clark Moore. Also known as A Visit from St. Nicholas. Well, you know what? Whatever it is called, this is the right one, so. Well, what are you doing all the way over there on the other side of the couch? There is a perfectly good blanket and lots of reclining room available here. Come on. No, get under this blanket with me. Get comfy. And snuggle up to me, you can sit underneath my arm, you can rest your head on my thigh, whatever is more comfortable. Okay? Let me just read this. There you go. Let's get the blanket over the top of your toes. Perfect. Comfy? Alright. <clears throat> Maybe take another quick drink of my... <laughs> yes, my warm beverage with a kick to it, thank you. All right. "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama, in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new-fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes did appear but a miniature sleigh, and eight tiny reindeer, with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment he must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his cursors, they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher! Now, Dancer! Now, Prancer and Vixen! On, Comet! On, Cupid! On, Donner and Blitzen! To the top of the porch! To the top of the wall! Now, dash away! Dash away! Dash away all! As leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the cursors they flew, with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas, too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler. 
just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk and laying his finger outside of his nose and giving a nod up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. There. How was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess I could read it again. You really want me to? <laughs> Babe, if that is a Christmas wish for you, I will read this for the remainder of the evening. Hey, maybe before the night's done, we can come up with a dramatic interpretation of it or something. Have a whole, like, reenactment and dance in the middle of the room. <laughs> That's okay if you'll be asleep before then. You go ahead and sleep if you feel like it, okay? You are perfectly safe and warm, right here in my arms. Merry Christmas, Bib. All right. Once again. Once again. <laughs>